I love it. We have a theme song now. If you are, didn't join in last night, that is our theme music. We are getting the band back together, and I'm super excited because we have someone who is now in the band, Jen Colella. She's going to do our show tonight, and uh, I've always wanted her in my band. I have not worked with this woman yet. Fantastic, fantastic actor, person. Uh, we're going to talk about all the shows. Tony nominee for Come From Away, If Then, Chaplin, High Fidelity, Way Back to Urban Cowboy. Maybe we'll get some of those. Uh, stories. Mary can't keep up with me when I throw the credits out so quickly. Look at that. That High Fidelity is one of those shows. Man, is that an underappreciated show. Uh, listen to the, the podcast I did with Tom Kitt, by the way, if you want. Peter Pan, I mean, she has done it all, and yet she is not done. We're going to talk about what's coming up for her as well once this thing is over. If you don't know, today is Show Shirt Wednesday, which is a uh, a hashtag that Playbill.com started a few weeks ago. And Mary, correct me if I'm wrong, but I have a feeling by now we're the only person using this, the only people using this hashtag. I don't think anyone else is using it. Uh, it seems to, I mean, no one tells me about it. Anyway, I'm wearing, I'm, I've got no more show shirts left. That's it. This is all I had. I had, uh, I've got my Rave Theater Festival shirt, my Rave Theater Festival shirt. If I keep scrolling up, you'll also see that I'm already in my pajamas today. So, uh, but I got my Rave Theater Festival shirt on, um, which was the theater festival we started last year. We're crossing our fingers that we're going to be able to do this. Again, we actually just announced finalists. Uh, we told everyone who we're going to be a finalist, and we're hoping that we can do this this year. Probably will not be in July as we intended, but we're pushing out uh, and we're trying to get this done so we can keep these emerging writers. Uh, and these emerging shows, get them the showcase they need and deserve. So cross your fingers that Rave will be here in New York when this is all over. What else is going on? I uh, wrote a blog today about, you know, of course, what else, but Mary, give me that image. The Tiger King. I finally succumbed. I watched this thing in, in one day. I watched it. And I was like, how am I going to be as gobsmacked by this thing as everyone else? I was. I wrote a blog today about five things writers can learn from the Tiger King. So go ahead and read that if you want uh, some fun. Also, don't forget about the Actors Fund. That is why we're here. It's really why we're doing this whole thing is to raise some money. Go ahead and give some money to the Actors Fund. We're, we've been approved because we've had so many views, because of all of you have been watching and also sharing. Reminder, by the way, to share this right now. The more people that we have, the more money we will raise. It's that simple. I do a lot of, I help a lot of younger producers and emerging producers raise money. And I literally say it's a numbers game. The more people you ask, the more money you'll get. Same thing, more people on this live stream, the more people we will help with uh, whatever issues they're facing as a result of this pandemic through the Actress Fund. So share, 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 share. So that's the, the great news is that this has been getting so many views that Facebook emailed me today and said, you can now start making money as a Facebook Live producer. Here's how you do it. There, I don't think, Mary, have you set this up yet? Mary? No, it's in the process. It, it's a multi-step oh, thing. I can't work like this. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's Just coming. Here. It's in the works. It is coming. Uh, okay, go back and work on it while I'm working here. So what it's going to be is that you're going to be able to purchase stars from Facebook and then like throw them at us or something. It's like throwing stars on Facebook. And every time we get a star or more likely my guests get stars, if you're like super fans of Jen Colella, you'll throw stars at her and we'll just donate all that money to the Actress Fund. That's not operational today because Mary apparently was watching Tiger King. So what you're going to have to do is hit that tip jar. So hit that tip jar tonight. Uh, when you love Jen Colella, because you will love Jen Colella. I'm going to bring her on right now. Please welcome to the live stream, Ms. Jen Colella. Welcome, Jen. What's up? How are you? I'm all right, man. I'm as good as can be expected during these crazy times. How are you, brother? I'm, I'm same, same. We're trying right to keep on. a big smile on her face and get through it like like everybody else, but thanks to people like you joining us on nights like this, I'm getting through it. I look, I so look forward to, especially you, I so look forward to this because 
we we know each other, we've hung out, we've like come close to working uh, together, but we haven't. And I'm like, I'm gonna get 30 minutes with Jen Kalel today. This is so amazing. Thing, so thank you. It's totally symbiotic. I felt the same way. I gotta say, you're one of my favorite people. Um, I'm new relatively to social media. I've never been on Facebook. Um, and I know that I'm missing out a lot. So I'm always honored when I'm asked to do things on Facebook. I've only been on Instagram for like, I don't know, a year and a half. Um, but I only follow people who fill me up and who will post uh, positive things. And you're fantastic at that. You're so Aww. inspirational. You're always looking at the at the bright side of things. I really love the way you move through the world. So it's it's my honor to be a part of this tonight, truly. Oh, thank you. So where where are you right now with that beauty? You're like at an art museum because you have this beautiful piece behind I you. am. I'm at an art gallery. Isn't that fetching? Um, <laughs> I, I am currently in Canada. I have fled to Canada with oh, my lady because um, she's Canadian. And um, so I'm here with her and her five-year-old who she's putting to bed now. So if I'm speaking more quietly, than I usually speak, and let's be honest, I'm usually pretty loud. Uh, that is why there's a five-year-old trying to get some sleep. Uh, I we do this at eight o'clock, not because the curtains go up at eight, because my kid goes to bed at seven thirty, and I'm on like bath time, so and I wouldn't trade that for the world. So yeah, I totally, right on. I totally get it. Uh, so you you like to fill yourself up, and you like to continue to be inspired and motivated. How are you doing that now? Like, how are you getting through this and staying positive, especially being a creative person? That's such a great question. I'm learning to, um, I'm learning about self care in new ways. You know, very often I just keep myself busy with projects and work, and I think that that's how I'm fueling myself. But without as much work in that regard, I'm learning uh, what it means to really take care of me. And I'm learning that a hot bath with some candles. And like listening to an album all the way through the way, you know, like like Pink Floyd, you know what I mean? Or, you know, musical theater albums as well. But like listening to an entire album, I've made a list of um, people whom I uh, love and respect and who have made a difference in my life. And I'm trying to reach out to them one by one. Um, I spend a lot of time on Zoom and Facebook uh, or face, uh, t uh, FaceTime to, to connect with my friends because my friends are family. Um, and then I find that looking after a five-year-old is mm. quite rewarding. I've always been a little nervous about it, but you can't get too upset if there's a five-year-old around, <laughs> right? Like we're responsible for the energy that we put around any human being, um, but certainly a young person who's looking at us to see how we react, what we do. And so I try to be my best self around him and that is helping me out. I'm learning a lot. So my daughter doesn't, really even realize she hasn't, but she's two. So she hasn't, doesn't realize she hasn't been outside in, yes. in weeks. Yes. Uh, we're being very protective here because yes. luckily we have a big enough space she can run around a bit. But a five-year-old is different. Does the five-year-old understand what's going on? And like, how do you, what do you say to a five-year-old to be like, this, this is an interesting time? Yeah, we're like, this sucks, buddy. And uh, we have to be very careful. He knows all about social distancing. He knows about the virus. He knows how to protect himself. He always has hand sanitizer. If we are outside, we're very, very careful to keep a distance. Um, he's very mindful about it. And uh, he's pretty calm about it uh, as long as we stay calm. If we hear something on the news and we start talking passionately about something, he's like, are you talking about the virus? <laughs> So it kind of keeps us, we're like, we are, and probably too long, buddy. So we'll switch <laughs> gears, do you want to wrestle? You know what I mean? <laughs> I love it. So I want to talk a little bit about your path to Broadway and how you got where you are, especially because I was just doing a little research about you today and Googling around and, of course, fell onto your Wikipedia page. And I don't know if you know this. Do you know that, that like, where they list you as, like, a, like, what you do? Do you know what the first thing you're listed as? I do not. Comedian. <laughs> I love it. That's so that I would like so you to tell us some jokes right now. So okay, maybe, cool. I only have dirty jokes, so um, get ready. No, I was I was a stand-up comedian um, in Los Angeles. I was a regular at the Laugh Factory in the Comedy Store uh, for a little bit before I came to New York. Um, oh, no. So I think that might be where yeah. Wikipedia got that from. So that's fascinating. So. Uh, 
w did you enjoy it? This is this is <laughs> this is one of the toughest, I believe, of all the types of performing there is. You're that not wrong. Is the hardest. You're not do. wrong. Um, okay, so when I was up there and doing my thing, I really enjoyed it because it's very empowering to trust myself, to trust my own jokes, to trust my own delivery. If an audience laughs, it's not because I told someone else's joke well. It's all, this is this is all me. And it's a very fulfilling feeling. On the flip side of that, I've also learned that I can fail miserably on stage and have no one else to blame. No writer, no pianist that messed up my rhythms. No, there's no one to blame. It's all me and I have failed miserably. And I learned that I can get the audience back in the next breath, in the next line, that the world doesn't stop revolving just because I've stumbled. And it's helped me with my courageousness on stage to learn that there's nothing that could go so terribly wrong in an audition or on stage or in the rehearsal room that I won't be able to recover from. So that was yeah, very, very valuable. It feels like doing a song or a dance number that you like know exactly where you're supposed to be, or what you're supposed to do would be easy compared to like getting on stage in front of an audience that's right like yes. this far sucking down drinks and yelling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. And they did heckle. Oh, it was wild. It was wild. You know what else was tough about it, Ken, was, um, and this was a while ago, so I bet things have changed a bit, but um, a lot of the comics were kind of dark and a little sad and they didn't have the most respect for themselves and each other and that's just not my that's not my jam i it really is not that wasn't my group of people so waiting for my set was difficult because i was around a lot of people who were just kind of um sad. Smoking. oh my gosh and talking trash about their colleagues and and themselves and it is everything i'm not about so well, at least that stand up comedy, like the wait for your set thing pays really, really well. Yeah. Like, <laughs> when you're going through eight shows a night. Yeah, dude. You're... I was like, yeah. So saved up a lot of money from that. No, I really, it's the courageousness. It, uh, it helped me hone. If I do concerts now, I don't have to write a lot of patter to connect my songs and to weave a show right. together because I, I really feel comfortable with a live group of audience, a live audience. And I like to help that group of people feel like we're in a living room together and we're going to share this experience together. And I, I definitely attribute that to my time on stage as a comedian. What, did you work music into it? Would you sing as well? Was that, were, that Sometimes cool? as a character, I should have done more of that in hindsight. <laughs> Don't worry, you made the right decision. Okay, thanks, man. Leave me stand up behind. Okay, right on. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank like, you. God damn it. If only, <laughs> if only I was still doing bringer shows where I had to like yeah. fill an audience and get them to drink two drinks. People ask if I do you do stand up now. I'm like, not <laughs> my life. No way, Jose. I'm not doing it. Uh, so your first show on Broadway was Urban Cowboy, yes? It was, yes. And, and tell me what that was. It was somewhat of an infamous show, which, by the way, I very much enjoyed, and you were fantastic, of Thank course. Thank you, brother. What, what, you know, it obviously didn't, didn't go so well in terms of commercial success, but, you, I mean, you, it got you here. And Well, here's the beautiful thing. The difference between my side of the table and your side of the table is that I have to treat everything that I'm a part of as a hit. And I believe in it wholeheartedly. I'm not looking to see, oh, is this something that's going to strike? Is this, if I'm asked to do it and I jump into a project, I, I honestly don't care if it's a hit or not. In my heart it is. It's something that needs to be done. It's something I believe in. So um, I would like to have done it longer. And I would like for uh, my investors and the people who put that money energy in there to have recouped, definitely. But as an actor, my job is to believe in it wholeheartedly, do the best I can for as long as we have the, the fortune to be on stage. And that's what we did. We had a blast. It was one of the best experiences yeah. of my entire life. Really? Oh my gosh. I got to sing and dance and fight and ride a mechanical bull. I mean, it was incredible. And some of my best friends in the world are from that production. I was, I FaceTimed with Lonnie Price today for an hour. He's one of my oh, best friends. He was the director. Um, I, you know, I, Marcus Chait came to see my show in San Francisco a, a couple months ago. And I, I'm, that experience was only fantastic for me. It was my introduction into New York and I could not be happier that it was. 
Well, this is uh, Sarah Edelman actually just said something that I was feeling here. Your positive energy is contagious. Uh, thank you, which I love. Um, I didn't know that people could write things to us. Thanks, Sarah. Sweet oh, yeah. Sarah. Look, you got you got all sorts of things going. That's dope. We're an awesome voice. Loving you. you got a lot of fans here watching, which is um, which is great. Sweet to me. You've got a lot of love going out there. But oh, I love it. You talk about this, and it's so true that, like, I find that out of every experience I have, even the ones that do not work out, there's always something good that comes of it, always. It's a great reminder to me to just do things that I love, because even if they fail, which is other people's words, not my own, I'm, something good's gonna happen. I'm gonna meet the right person, something I'm gonna be changed. Absolutely, and believing that is a practice. Yeah. If you keep believing that wherever you, if your heart has led you somewhere, that's exactly where you're supposed to be. And so there's, of course, there's something good in it because you're there, because that's what is. And believing that where you are is exactly where you're meant to be is, is a practice. So you've originated a bunch of roles now. You originated that role. You originated All of them on Broadway, in, isn't right? it? And that's, yeah, yeah. I mean, Everyone. that's a very rare thing. It's amazing. And obviously writers trust you to create a character where none existed before. What's your process when working on something original? Um, well, first of all, it is my favorite part about being New York is that there's always something being created, right? And exactly what you said, when, when creators trust me with their baby, with something they've been working on for years sometimes, it is the greatest honor. There's nothing better. They're handing me a piece of themselves and trusting me to do my best to help it move into the world. I could cry. There's nothing sweeter. There's nothing sweeter. So um, my, I love being in the rehearsal room. I love rehearsing much more than I love performing. I love to perform because of the energy that I get back from the audience, but being in a rehearsal room is by far my favorite place in the world to be because I can stumble and, and um, learn and come in prepared and be a good leader with my energy and my attitude and my positivity and flirt and mess up and do all the things and be safe and create a family. Uh, that to me is the gold in what we do. It's, it's the best part. Of it. Um, and I, I like to, I'm prepared, man. I will do, there's no way I'm going to come in and I know we're working on a scene and be like, oh, I haven't really looked at it. Like, <laughs> that's just not, that's not my jam. My whole jam is don't worry over here. Got it, got it, got it. I'm not your trouble person. I'm only, I'm only going to be prepared and ready for whatever you need. And I take great pride in that. It's amazing. So I'm going to flip it now. And uh, Drew asked a question here. You've created many new roles like we just talked about. Is there a classic role you've always wanted to play? Something Great that question, Drew. Um, you know, there is. I would like to play Bobby um, and company. Mm. Um, and I would like to play, and I think this is down the road for me, but it's, down, it's gonna happen, Mama Rose, because she's so loud. And I've made a whole career out of singing like it's the last time I'm ever gonna sing, right? Um, so I'm excited about that one. Um, what, there's another one. Oh, I think Diana in, um, Next to Normal. Um, oh, yeah, that's I think, a great I think that'd be a good one because it's rock and she's a little nuts. That feels like a good fit. Um, I, you know, I think I, I, I'm open to absolutely anything. I will try to use my own life experience to fit into anything, but those three are the ones that popped into my head. What about, do you write as well? Do you write music or are you a writer? My songs are ridiculous. My songs are like, you're in the kitchen and you're looking cute. You know what I mean? Like I wrote a happy birthday song with a bunch of curse words in it that I'll do on Cameo sometimes. Um, but my, my stuff is not serious. No, it's not. My songs are ridiculous. Like late night, I know like three chords and it's about how cute my girlfriend is. Like that's, that's about all. <laughs> They're like stand-up comedy sounds. Yeah, like. yeah. <laughs> so come from away. Uh, let's, let's just talk about this amazing piece of theater, which is one of the most joyous experiences I've had in the theater in a long time. And that's what I love about the show because, of course, everyone, including Sue and Randy, your producers, on my podcast, were like, "We're great." Before it opened, we're. Cra I mean, everyone's calling it the 9/11 musical. We don't know what we're doing, <laughs> but like, we're doing this thing because it's amazing. 
And of course, that was everyone's question, like how could something about 9-11 be so joyous? Mm -hmm. How could it be? And then of course you go and you're just blown away by the love on stage. But I want to talk about the process. What, like, were there times throughout it where, you're, where you were like, well, we're not there yet. Like how, how much did it change from the first time you were involved uh, from the first moment to the end? Well, I have to be honest. Um, when I first read it, I wasn't sure. I was like, it's a lot of direct address. We're talking to them a lot. You know, like I wasn't sure in the 9-11 thing. And I was like, ooh, my goodness. And then when they asked me to sing Captain Bass, I was like, she says in the song she's 51. There's no way I could play 51. Uh, I wasn't, I was just totally like, there she is. Look at that. Look at her. Oh my goodness, just singing like she's never gonna sing again. Um, Which I love. I mean, it does such a great, like a reviewer should write that about you. It's like every time I've seen you perform, I've been like, she is, she is singing like she'll go tomorrow. It's just oh, a, it's amazing. I'm so full out. I have to learn how to, even in rehearsal, I gotta tell you, I'm. It's people laugh at me because they're like, are you gonna do it full out? Because I, <laughs> I don't know how to do it, man. What um, teach you? They're like, like all these people, like the old, the bitter, like uh, we're just marking and getting out there. I'm marking. I mean, hell, I'm sure it would behoove me to learn how to mark a bit, to like <laughs> save it. But I don't, I don't know what I'm saving it for. I'm like, it's now. Um, anyway, I wasn't sure how the how it was going to go. Um, and then we had our first preview audience in La Jolla. And Ken, they laughed at all the, we thought it was funny. We thought it was moving, but you know, it's not until you share it with the vibra that vibration with other people, with an audience who hasn't been in the room with you and, and ask them what they think. And their response was so overwhelming. We mm -hmm. were blown away. And that's when I was like, oh, we have something here. And then we had the joy of moving from La Jolla to Seattle to DC. We got to continue to work on it and let these very smart, audiences tell us what was working and what wasn't. And we kept retooling. It was genius the way they did it. I, I thought our producers were so smart to do that. We had kind of a little tour before we came into New York. And so we were as ready as we possibly could have been, uh, which I think is, is a great reason for the success of the show, why it's so tight. Yeah, and there was such a buzz building. Mm -hmm. That they did said they were it was a brilliant piece of producing because they they took a subject that they thought people might this could never be a musical by the time it got to new york people were hearing oh not only is this a musical it's one that you have to see mm -hmm. so I, i'm i'm i respect sue and randy so much i do too um i just had to throw this comment up there christy walsh is spending her honeymoon watching this on our patio Christy, with all due respect, you should turn this <laughs> off right now. <laughs> I right know, now. Christy. She and her partner um, have been fans for a long time. They flew all the way to San Francisco uh, to see my one-woman show uh, a couple uh, months ago. They're so sweet. I'm wishing you both so much love. Happy honeymoon, uh, ladies. Big congratulations to Christy and her partner there. And if they can watch in their honeymoon, you can get more people to watch and donate to the Actors Fund, everybody. So click those hearts. Click those hearts. I can see the number now. Mary has me in a different screen so I can see him. So everyone just click those hearts, click those thumbs up. Let's get some more people watching so that we can uh, that we can raise some more money for the Actors Fund. Uh, and let's look and see what other questions we have. Did you ever fall off the bull in Urban Cowboy? <laughs> I also know this fan. What's up, Viv? Um, no. Dude, no. <laughs> no, I did not. That was another area in which I happened to excel. I, um, I was really, I was very adept on that bull. It felt quite natural to me. We had bull practice. We went to a, um, a bar in Jersey and practiced on a bull there before we got the bull for our set. Um, and I had a lot of time to practice. We were in um, Coconut Grove. Remember that, that awesome mm -hmm. theater when it used to be in That's Florida. So. Never fell off the bull. Some of the boys did, not me. Not you, <laughs> not you. Tell us a little bit about this one woman show. Was this the first time you did it in San Francisco? Um, you know, 
it? Yes. You know what? I, I don't know how it happened. My sweet um, musical director from Come From Away, Chris Ranney, um, for, there were a couple of little things where people were like, can you just put together some songs and have an evening? And so I started doing that for, for various events. And then um, I got a gig in Alaska. Uh, through his girlfriend, who is our fiddle player, Caitlin Warbelow. And so I had a whole band. I had all these charts, just songs that I like to sing. And we kind of made this show up. And then, yeah, Feinstein's uh, in San Francisco asked if I wanted to come. So I was like, absolutely, we're, we're building this show right now. And it, that one was just me and Chris. And uh, it was delightful. I've always been a little nervous to do a cabaret because there's so many of them in New York. And... I want to make sure that I that it's something special if I'm going to make people come out like I want to have a reason to 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 bring them out, you know? And uh I had a blast and I I think I I found a groove with this particular show. So it was I'm excited to share it again. Hmm. And Heidi asked a question that I was uh, going to ask, what's next for you? Do you have anything lined Hi, up right Heidi. now? Um I do. It's oh gosh, I hope there's something I've been working on for for years and years. Uh, with Shana Taub. Um, it's a new project called um, Suffragist. And um, it's about the women's suffrage movement. And it's an all female cast, all female creative team. And it is one of the most moving pieces of theater I have ever been a part of. And I'm super, super excited. Um, I'm not sure what's going to happen now and what the timeline is with it. But uh, Keep your keep your ears to the ground because it's it's going to be something special when it happens. I'm stoked about it. Lee Silverman was on just uh, a week or so ago, telling us a little bit about it. So it's um, it sounds very exciting. I yeah. met the producer like a year ago, and I was like, I hear you're working on this thing with Trina Tao. I want in, and she was like, Get in line. Buddy. Don't blame yeah. you. I want in. I <laughs> I want to put. I've never wanted to put my money in something. I want to put my money into this. Really. Uh -huh. You seem you seem like a person that you that you might get into the producing side or the business side. Is that just me making that up? Do you have a business mind about um, you? I I do, and I, it's only something that that has grown throughout the years. You know what I mean? I have to now. I you know now I am my own business. I incorporated a couple years ago, and I'm learning more about the business side. And knowing producers like you and Sue and Randy and Rachel Sussman make me realize oh there are different ways to reach out mm -hmm. to people and that money is energy and that we can share that energy to create something and it doesn't have to be all twisty mustache producer you know what i mean <laughs> like there are other ways to do it and you're a wonderful example of that so that yeah it does people like you draw me into that particular world well i always say that like actors performers are can make the best producers because they're naturally such good salespeople uh -huh. and they have so much passion for the art because they eat, sleep, and breathe it. They are the voice of it. So please come on board. Come on right board. Right on, man. Uh, speaking of you being a business, uh, Megan asks, what is the, one of the biggest challenges you have faced living in New York City and being a performer? She's a new equity actress in the city. We'd love some tips and insight. How should Megan make it? Hi, Megan. Thanks for your question. Um, okay, so there's a million challenges, and all of the challenges are the ones that everybody told you about, right? No one's ever said, oh, you're going to be an actor? Easy. Totally clear path. There's not going to be any worries at all. It's all of the rejection. It's finding a, a job that's going to support you. You've got to find a support job first so that then you can put all your focus and energy into making yourself known. It takes a minute for people to get to know who you are and how you work. So you have to keep showing up at auditions and keep showing these producers, and these directors and these casting directors, not only how prepared you are, but what your energy is, right? The only two things that actors have any control over is how prepared we are mm -hmm. and our attitude. And those are both things that you can work on every single day. So my advice to you is to get a support job, something that supports you so that you're not worried about rent and food. And then trust that you are enough. When you go into these auditions, you can have people whom you look up to, um, but you don't need to emulate anyone. Go in there and find your own voice. Trust that what you're selling is exactly right. Where you are in that day is exactly where you're supposed to be. There's nothing you should have on your resume. There's no note you should be able to hit. What you're presenting is exactly right. 
And the more you can trust that, the more the producers and the creative team will trust you. What they want to do is trust that if they give you this thing, you've got it. So you want to walk in there saying, I got it. I mean, where were you when I was an actor? Because like, <laughs> maybe, maybe I still be doing it with that kind of thing. Actually, we're, everyone is thankful that I gave that up. Just like you <laughs> probably, I think. Uh, okay, a very, very serious question now. We have okay, to okay. the most serious. Yep. Uh, uh, and many people have it. Thank you for sharing your time with all of us. Also, love the haircut. Any tips for at-home haircuts? My girlfriend wants to cut me to cut her hair. You guys. So first what should of all, we do? This is like a you're, you're, What you should do is get a good girlfriend. Like, check this out. Oh, oh, I love it so much. It's like it kicks up back, too. It's like almost a faux oh, I love it so much. I don't know what to tell you. I was worried. And then Shalene was like, I got it. I'll totally cut your hair. And I thought, all right, shoot, why not have at it? The velocity at which she started cutting was a little alarming at first, uh, <laughs> but she just <laughs> she just did it, and I love it. I absolutely love it. It feels so great. My advice is to, if you're with somebody, ask them if they feel comfortable trying it and let them try it. Where are you gonna? What's the, you got tons of time for it to grow back out. Yeah, you know what the worst thing that could happen is what, what is you have to wear a hat for the next several weeks of your life because that's the worst thing. I love my wife and she said yes. I asked her to do something and she said yes. I will do this for you, and then it didn't go so well. So but that's I, the joy of it. That's the beauty of it, right? The saying I yes. I actually said to her, like, what's the worst that could happen? Go, babe, go. I could end up looking like Phantom of the Opera. Oh, no, this thing is not coming off right now. It is not coming off. No? Just telling everyone that right now. Um, oh, man. I, I, maybe she, you, she should FaceTime with your wife because or your girlfriend because this is like. Yeah, a I lot mean, of people have been asking, and so maybe I should ask Shalina if she'll give a, a tutorial because she is very confident. She's good at so many things. Maybe we should have her on the live stream tomorrow, which would just be, fuck this Broadway shit. Because how to give a Corona kind <laughs> I like that you're dropping some fucking f bombs. That feels yeah, right. I didn't know we could do that. It doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> um, I want to throw one more comment up on this. Okay. Here. I swear that Jen passes goodness wherever she goes. This live stream has my heart feeling so warm. Uh, I feel the same way, and I just like what what Morgan has said here is was the whole reason I started this website to try to warm some hearts out there. So I am so thankful to you for spending this. 30 minutes with us and warm and some hearts because you just did. Morgan, thanks for saying that. Ken, thank you for having me. I also want to give a shout out to Mary, who's like running this whole thing. Um, you're crushing it, Mary. Um, I, I'm so super grateful that people joined and care about what I have to say. Thank you, Ken, for inviting me. I'll do anything. I'll follow you to the ends of the earth, brother. I believe in you so much. Likewise, likewise. We will work together. That is of course we will. making right now. I can't wait. Right on, man. All right. Take care, Jen. Have a great Take night. Take care. Bye, loves. Right. Jen Colella, everybody. I mean, I've never actually spent that much time with her before, which is one of the reasons that I love doing this is because in a time when we can't get together, there is still a way for this thing to bring people together. We just did it. You can do it too. So Jen's practice, which is an amazing one, She's got a list of all these people she's going to reach out to and just say hi in their life. You don't have to, like, listen, this is me talking. Who's like, oh, write script, like, work on educate yourself, all that stuff. You don't have to do any of that. But I do believe in improving yourself somehow. And one of the ways to do that is all the stuff that Jen talked about. Make a list of people and talk to them. Just reach out to people and check in and see how they're doing. Tomorrow we'll be reaching out and checking in to see how someone else is doing. Mary, who do we have tomorrow night? Show them. Joe Iconis, Joe Iconis, composer, lyricist, be more chill, Broadway bounty hunter, viral music sensation. It's got like 1 billion streams or something crazy that be more chill. He's going to talk about what he's doing. I bet he's been writing some music. Hopefully we'll try to get him by a piano. Maybe he'll do something for us. Tomorrow night, Joe Iconis, he's always fun. <laughs> he gave us a keynote at Super Conference this year, which was a lot of fun. So he's tomorrow. We have a whole ton of other people. 
Mary, throw up the list of other people that are going to be up there, all those photos. Look at them all. Ashley Park coming up. David Corrin's superstar Broadway set designer coming up. Carrie Butler is going to be here. I love Carrie Butler. I love Carrie Butler. It's tons of people coming up. So um, chime in. Don't forget to donate to the Actors Fund. Donate to the Actors Fund. Share. You can do this thing, right? You can set a reminder for tomorrow. So we're learning all about Facebook. You can set a reminder, Mary, yes, Mary, God, dang it, you're killing it right now. Reading my mind like the good producer that she is. Uh, you can get this reminder, click this button, click this button. It actually helps with some Facebook algorithm weird thing that is like Mark Zuckerberg invented, which it helps get it out to more people. And when it gets out to more people, we raise more money. When we raise more money, more people are helped through this madness. So do us a favor, get the reminder, get the reminder, get the reminder, share, share, share. Thank you so much for that. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay home. Something to make you smile. From our own vault, we opened up our own vault today and we pulled out something that I made years ago that made me laugh. We're gonna see if it makes you laugh. One of the reasons I wanted to share it is because it includes some actors that you may know from Broadway, including a few guys from, uh, getting the band back together and some of my crew, uh, Ryan Duncan, Brandon Williams, a whole bunch. So I, I, I'm going to tell you right now, this material could be a little spicy. So Jen, if your five-year-old woke up and is watching, he should not be. Um, so this is a little something I made years ago uh, called The Bunny Hole. And it's a web series I created called The Bunny Hole. Right, Mary? Mary's scrambling to find an image right now. Did you make one? Is it not? Oh, she messed up. Mary, get your face on the screen. Where's the image? You're on mute now. You can't even remember to put yourself off mute. I have the link. I have the link. Damn. I'm posting it. It'll be in the comments and they can go look at it right now. If, I had, if we were not in a pandemic, you'd be fired. That is not true. I would never do that. I know. Look at the face. That's so mean. I'm going to get serious hates. Everyone's going to start hitting the hate button on their on their Facebook. They're going to spike up. Look, go there. Producersperspective.com backslash smile. Here's the reason why I put this uh, web, web series up. I, I put it up for a very specific reason. Um, because I had an idea for a television pilot. Take Reno 911, the improv comedy television show, merge it with this HBO show called Cat House, which was about a real brothel. It was a reality TV show about a brothel. And I had the idea of merging them. Wouldn't that be funny? Wouldn't that be fun? I had never made a television show before. I didn't know how to start, didn't know what to do. And I made it anyway. I made it anyway. We just figured it out. I rented a house in Pahrump, Nevada. I shipped 16 actors out there. We improvised this thing and I shot it all. And I cut it up into a web series and it won a bunch of awards at film festivals and all sorts of good things. Did it get sold to a network? No, none of that stuff, but good stuff happened as a result. And it's the thing to make you smile. It's stupid, silly, somewhat spicy, a little bit for mature audiences, uh, but uh, it's a lot of fun. Go check it out if you want. I think you'll recognize some people. That's the something to make you smile for today. And tomorrow we have Joe Iconis. Join us for tomorrow. Don't forget about the Actors Fund. Don't forget to stay inside. Stay inside. And we will see you then. Enjoy the end music and that little Easter egg. Stay tuned to the very end. Bye-bye, guys. We're getting the band back together.